Hi, I'm Demon and welcome to hell for another day of repairing broken things patched together by many other broken things. Uh, what we have here is a snow plow. We've got to reattach to the bumper of this old fort. The existing mounts are in the wrong position and uh, what's left of the snow plow is rather kind of bodged and broken so we've got to make some sense of it and put it back together uh, as quick and cheaply as possible to get the job done so come take a look at what we have to do Show you the bottom underneath this where it was previously attached and see what you think. Here's one of the arms that ripped off, if you would call it that. And there's another one here, if you would call it that. Uh, now the structure for all of this is, uh, well you see it's engineering structure, so to save some money we're not even going to look at that, we're just going to leave it and abandon it and we're going to put the new mounts right on the bottom corner of this 8 inch channel because actually this bumper is a lot more securely fashioned than what this previous mount is so that's going to change its point a little bit but our hydraulic raise and lower for the blade will make up for it because it's attached by chain so if there's any discrepancy we'll just lengthen the chain and away you go this is the uh, Alberta's bush technology at its finest. And here we go to the other half of this, of what we have. So you can see the frame is made of, of several pieces of inch and a half by 3 16ths HSS and several angles. Now these angles here, peering, are so it can get underneath the bumper. What we're going to do is we're going to cut all this off, put new tubes, and then we'll put a gusset plate on the outside so it acts like a, a sandwich, like a fish plate. So we'll straighten the tubes and then off of that we're going to cut our hydraulic mounts and this garbage off and we're going to uh, weld it to a square plate and then weld it to the tube. It takes the thinking out. They obviously don't care how much this looks like but it'll be functional. As you can see there's been more add-ons onto this not really necessarily. They put this inch and a half by half inch flat bar on the bottom. Uh, I don't know what strength that's supposed to serve besides attaching whatever this was supposed to be attached to. So we're going to get rid of that because that serves no function at all. And when we straighten it out and get it done, the only problem we got next is that this whole unit is twisted. So it's not even parallel with the blade. Um, I don't think the client's going to want to spend a lot of money to try to straighten that out. So we're not going to worry about it right now. We're just going to install it, bolt it up, see how it sits. Um, if it's a problem, then we can cut into it and straighten it if the client wants to pay for that. This is one of those projects where our client wants me to make it work and make it cheap. He doesn't need it fancy. You just, like, look at it. It would take more makeup than... Uh, and he wants to uh, throw at this pig. So, make it work, make it be cheap. I'm just pounding the bolt out of the broken plate. We use whatever parts we can, right? left of the junk in there. Yes, I'm going to reuse what's here. No sense in making anything new. 
I gotta cut it off anyway. I might as well cut it with intent. Nothing but the finest in technology. Now to cut this uh, engineered strapping off the back, I'm going to have to grind all the slag off first before I can zip through with the torch or just continue on with the grinder. Otherwise, you'll get that familiar, oh, my eyes are burning, my nose are burning, I feel funny. So, that's what that's from. When you burn it, it's a mill, the, the slag from 7018, when you burn it, it turns into sulfur dioxide, and then you breathe it, and then it turns into sulfuric acid in your lungs, henceforth, that nice, tingly, burny feeling. You know the shame and the sad thing about my work is I'm always constantly removing, you know, fine works of art and, and culture. And it's a shame. It breaks my heart. But we've got to do it anyway. Goodbye, art. <laughs>
a matter of setting it to oxidizing and just feathering the oxygen. So you're just melting, you're finding where that weld puddle is and you melt it away. It doesn't look pretty, but... You don't worry if you have to take it off with a chisel. You don't care about the one main plate. But you want to do keep the structure. Because you're burning hot and you're cutting that weld out, there's usually a lot of rust and shit and everything in there. So you just leave yourself enough meat left and you can take it off with a grinder. See, we just rough cut it. And then we'll shave all that up with a grinder, find good metal, splice from there. And the trick is usually cut as close as you can to the base metal, but don't try to get too close because you don't want to nick it. So you're going to have a fine line between more cutting or grinding. This is only up about 3 16ths, it's not bad. If I want to take a little more off, I can make it a little quicker. This one may look a little blobbly and slag left over, but it's down to with an eighth. So that means less grinding. Once again, don't worry what demo work looks like because you're going to have to clean the surface to see what kind of good parent metal you have left. Now you'll notice when I'm grinding, you'll hear different sounds from the grinder, almost like the armature is a bit stalling. That's where you want to work your grinders up to, just hard enough to kind of make, you want to always make them work, because if you're not, you're going to end up glazing the discs. And I'm always reprocessing old grinding discs that people use for about five minutes and put away because they look all shiny. See that? Now the problem with that is it doesn't grind with a shit. So how we do, what we do to clean this stone up a bit is when you got jagged material that you're taking off, I'll show you what. does is it does bust up the edges a bit but you got to watch you don't do that too fast otherwise you can break big chunks out of the stone and then lots will come off but it, it helps and keep working them Double check, put our straight edge on there, and oh look, we're flush with the top, we're square with the existing tube, and I've put my bevels all the way around so we can do a double bevel splice. So we'll do the same with that. Perfect. Good enough for prep, no old fab new parts, and install. So I've mapped out my uh, new new mounts for the snowplow, but because they're small pieces, what I'm doing is mapping them out on one plate and center punching the chalk lines so I don't lose them, and then I'll take them to the drill press and I'll drill my holes and then I'll cut the pieces out. Save some time. Yeah, this 
center of our bolt hole. I'm radiusing the outside corners here, here, and this inside corner here gets welded to a piece of angle iron, two by three eighths. And then that will get welded to the bumper, and this is what the uh, plow bolts are. Doing. Always drill with a wood block underneath. Don't drill into your pipes. Nobody likes that. And it's always good to check your chart for your surface feet per minute before you use a drill, but yeah. This one's a little fast, but it works just fine. It's gonna catch you, it's gonna cut you, and 
chances are you're not going to pull it off the rack because then you're going to be like, oh, I got more work to do. So, just trim it up. Tacking, fitting, and welding up the mounts for the side, side to side shift for the uh, plow. And then I will weld these down the mounts on the bumper. I'm using GMAW solid wire because it's quick and easy. And Ease of fit up and line up of this bolt hole for our hydraulic mounts for the side shift. I just put some spaces in between to equal out two inches and I bolted them snugly and now I will set them on their lines.
So right now we're just fitting up our stiffening plates, our gussets, either side. Because the splice is right against the tube, I want a little bit more for shock value because this is going to be hammered into everything. So I'm just going to add a little, a couple 3 16th plates to make it a little better. Now I've extended these six inches and you're kind of wondering, it's like, what, what is this? What I had to do here is drop uh, some one inch HSS inside of some inch and a half by three sixteenths HSS because we didn't have the correct bushing. But, hey, that's not bad. That works out. Sometimes it might not be what you necessarily want, but it's what you got. And the client will be most happy with this because it'll be working and plowing snow. So, if you don't have a round tube, use a square one. Whenever we put these reinforcement plates on, keep in mind this is 3 16 so is the wall of the tube, so putting a lot heavier is not really going to make a lot more difference because we're going to only put a 3 16 weld on. Plus, always when you're putting it, put it back, you know, a quarter inch, so you can weld right along the edge of the tube, that's where it's strongest. If you weld to the middle of the tube, well, it'll flex and it can break out, but if you weld it to the edges, That'll be the strongest. Okay, if you want these plates to be at its strongest and not creating an additional weak point, we won't be welding across the tube on either of these because they can form like notch lines or possible places where it can break. So the strongest part to weld these is actually just along the seams and inside. That's it. That's way more than enough and you'll never tear that out. And then you don't have to worry about constant jarring for it to break here. So don't don't weld those. You'll save yourself some hassle next time. It's gonna have a little bit of flex. Here's our new replacement mount where these used to go. So taking them from underneath and bringing them to the corner of the bumper. 2 by 3 8 3 8 plate, nice and heavy. And then I pre beveled the edge so it fit tightly. And they're both the same. So there we go. Just like that.
marking out where the bottom of the gusset used to be. The bottom of it was parallel, right here. if we can accommodate that. Now what's important is we want to get both these rams straight again. So we'll measure and make sure both rams are the same height. Because obviously Here's our hydraulic mount, and what they'll do is they will bolt them up into here. Once we got them set, and then we'll straighten them out like that and weld them across. So all we gotta do now is kind of stiffen up this bumper a little bit. It's loose from rattling in its bolt holes, and the uh, the Ford certified hood latch is also holding up the bumper. So we're gonna put a stiffener plate and just attach it to the stub end of the frame here to a channel so it doesn't go down. Nothing fancy, but make it a little better. Welcome, come on into my steel rack. This is one of them. That's where I keep all my shorts. Everything from 24 inches under on top shelf, and then 24 inch to 36, 36 to 48, 48 to 60. So I know right away if I've got little pieces of material to do the job. Don't waste anything. It's not like steel goes bad. So now we're looking for a piece of one by two or one by inch and a half. There's a trimming a three quarter inch plate, but I'll have enough material here to cut a couple pieces to uh, stiffen up the bottom of that bumper. So it's, it's nothing fancy. All we're doing is taking this plate and feeding it up and behind so it hits the inside of the channel iron. And there's a gap on the couple layers of frame here. So it's gonna be wedged in between there and welded in. So it's basically just a stopper. Take up this play. I mean, it'll help with the impact when they hammer this blade around in the garbage. First, you gotta remove all the dirt and 
grease. It's the hood. Holy shit. Here, I've got a solid bumper again and now they can go and plow. It's all done. I'll just slide this over and we'll fit it up so you can actually see what the snow plow looks like if you've never seen one. Well, now to start this little beast, and I hear she likes the, the really good stuff. Not too much, or you'll lift the head.
let's see, we refitted this so we can fit our hydraulic mounts and pin it up. And uh, try not to spend a lot of time and money. But at least now he's got a working plow and the bumper doesn't move anywhere. Won't see. Won't seem so winkity wonkity. See what hell. And she's all in back in working order again. Yay. See? That's for plowing snow. There we go, off in the distance. For the first time in three years, we're doing pre-orders on uh, new hoodies. These hoodies are 100% Canadian made and manufactured. They're 95% cotton, 15 ounce. Won't melt. These hoodies will go to hell and back, just like you.